Studio Ghibli's first CG feature film, Earwig and the Witch, will be releasing at the end of this year in Japan and the start of next year overseas. That in itself is weird enough for a studio with such a conservative view towards digital elements, but over time and by working with CG artists on Borrow the Caterpillar, it seems that Miyazaki's attitude towards computer animation has softened over time, as he now serves as the planner for his son's new film. And now we have a better picture of who is actually involved in bringing this film to life. First, we learn the names of the cast, which, like many Ghibli films, is made up of live-action actors rather than professional voice actors. According to Ghibli's PR head in 2011, this is for two reasons. Firstly, they try and make films that feel more grounded, so by getting live-action actors, they're less likely to put on an anime-like voice which wouldn't fit these stories. But the second reason is more pragmatic. Marketing. It's way easier to sell a film with famous actors attached, and that's a strategy Ghibli adopts for international releases as well. But the real question was how does a studio like Ghibli, which closed down its CG department during Ponyo, create a fully 3D film? And now we have somewhat of an answer, and it appears to be the result of bringing in new people to the studio once again. In the past, they've hired Polygon Pictures to work with them to adapt Ronya the Robber's Daughter, but this is a different kind of crew. Back when Hayao Miyazaki was making Borrow the Caterpillar, they brought on Yuhei Sakuragi, a young CG animator from animation studio Crafter. But as production dragged on, Sakuragi had to leave to go become a director in his own right. So then they brought on animator Yukinori Nakamura, a member of the small CG team Unknown Case. This team helps out on plenty of projects like the Honkai Impact 3rd cutscenes, Expelled from Paradise, and plenty of video games. And now he serves as CG supervisor for Earwig and the Wind. He's become someone that the team at Ghibli can trust, and for this film he's working with an animation producer who used to work for Marza Animation, Sega's animation house. But they're not the only ones with video game experience on board. Handling the backgrounds is Yuki Takeuchi, who did concept art for Gravity Rush and Astra's Wrath. They're known for their big fantasy world designs, so it's interesting to see what they accomplish in designing a small English town. And coupled with these CG experts are a whole bunch of Ghibli veterans who will try and take this unique perspective and make it fit with the Studio Ghibli brands. For many people, this is a lost cause entirely. It just doesn't look like any Anything we'd normally expect from the studio. But regardless of how different it is, it's honestly impressive that they tried. They didn't just outsource it, they found people who could make it, and basically built their own team to create something new and stand out, knowing it would be a turn off for a lot of people. Earwig and the Witch will be broadcasting for the first time on the NHK, the film's primary investors, on December 30 in Japan. Thanks for watching OsuQuest in Japan. Feel free to subscribe to find out more about the art and creation of Japanese pop culture.